Before this video starts, I wanted to wish all of you guys happy holidays, and I wanted to thank you for the support for this project from the bottom of my heart. I know this channel didn't start out doing anything like this, but I really thoroughly enjoy this stuff. Now, I know I haven't done a trading card stream in a while. Don't worry, those are going to be coming back soon. And I'm going to be making a video series because I made my own custom origins for the Minecraft Origins mod. Not for the Forge port, for Fabric. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do the Forge port. Regardless, I digress. There's some cool stuff about the series coming up, and I wanted to thank all of you guys for enjoying it and give a serious thank you to Maniacal Z, Fawasi, 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 I, I can never remember how to pronounce their name, QQ, Ross K, and Old Souls Audio. And a special thanks to Kumi, another person's name that I can't pronounce, I'm sorry. I want to thank all of you guys for all of your extremely hard work on this series. It means the world to me, it really does. Thank you guys yet again, happy holidays, and enjoy chapter three of COG. The Peck was urged to walk far ahead on the trip back to the bookstore, while lugging Brawn atop his back the best he could, hidden by a borderless mirror conjured by the odd chubby man. Both he and the pointy-eared lady had promised he could read more books and wouldn't be seen as long as he went with them and answered a few of their questions. While initially he assumed the distance to be a punishment for running away, the discussions behind him implied other motives. He remained at the distance he was asked to, sometimes slowing slightly to catch a word or phrase drifting a bit too far on the wind. If some tycoon got it, that is yet to be seen. The risks! None of this made sense to him. Risks? Risks from what? And for who? What needed to be seen? Who needed to see it and why? His mind bent over backwards, searching for answers. But the walk back to the shop left him no time for conclusions. The overhead sign was before them all too soon, and the goblinoid was left perplexed by everything that had occurred. Perhaps most confusing of all to the peck was what he focused on most. The state of the other combatant. Bouncing his foot against the wooden floorboards, the peck wiped a few more tears from his eyes as he inspected the unconscious and bruised body of Braun resting atop a blanketed table. His mind raced, trying to comprehend the previous encounter while attempting to settle the adrenaline rush. Finally, Orville looked up and nodded with a small smile. Yep, appears that both Grim and Braun will be good to go. Braun should wake up before Grim. Though you really did a number on the poor man, Oga. Slight suspicion crept into Orville's steadfast gaze, causing Olga to indignantly huff. Oh hush, he had it coming. We never did get along, but still, he should know better than to try and stop me of all people. Looking over to the goblinoid sitting a healthy distance away, she took a breath. Say, um, Peck? Um, you, you are a Peck, right? After a moment of pondering, he nodded. She stood up, looked at the charred, unconscious body of Grimm before her, and heaved a sigh. Well, alright, Peck. Tell me, how exactly can you understand me? And furthermore, how did you beat Braun so badly? And wh what the hell was that shockwave and- Orville rested a gentle hand on her shoulder, bringing her paws. Orga, we both know you're very excited about the prospect of a new research subject. But please, one question at a time. <sighs> Fine. First off, how can you understand me, Peck? This time, after the inquiry, she remained silent. As she waited, she slowly pushed a table between two bookshelves, and after a minute or two of contemplation, he spoke. I... just... do. I get words. Get from you. Much noise on way here. Now... 
noises make. As he scoured for the right word, a hand was held up by his questioner. I see. So it just makes logical sense to you after observing me, huh? <laughs> I'm honored. By the way, the word you're looking for is... She was interrupted by a sudden snap of the being's fingers. Understand! Olga nodded with a smirk, clearly amused. Fascinating. Well, if the answer to the how is through my own speech patterns, then maybe you could give me an answer in regards to the when. This induced another brief pause in the peck his mind unfurling the correct phrasing slowly but surely. Think at night, soonest night before. Olga nodded again, half-heartedly gesturing for Orville to push two bookshelves together as makeshift bedrails. After this, he jogged into another room rather quickly. Hmm, so the night you broke in is the same as- No, 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 break in! No break in. No being bad. Only walk to door. Try to push. Try to open door. But it make noise. Fall down. He then phantomimed a door falling off its hinges, which made Olga smirk. Hmm, okay. So you tried to push open a door that needs to be pulled open. That explains the arbitrary entry, but why did you want to come in here anyways? Especially during the daytime. I mean, I, I know for a fact that your species is nocturnal. Come in to feel understand? To feel... Uh, 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 learn! Excited at remembering the proper term sooner this time, the peck took a moment to revel in his mental victory before continuing, during which Orville returned with pillows and blankets, the finishing touches on the hidden bed quickly completed so that Orville could rest grim carefully atop it. Come in at night to feel learn. Stay until day forgot to watch. Hmm, alright, so you just didn't- They okay? He interrupted urgently, pointing towards Braun. Did not want that. I, I fear for live. Orville finally took a seat alongside Olga and the peck, nodding gently in response. It'll be just fine, and nobody's holding this action against you. Looking up, the stout human had a question of his own to ask. According to Olga, she saw a bunch of cogs and gears spinning around you, accompanied by a shockwave. I don't suppose you use chroma, do you? This took the peck by surprise. Sure, he'd read about it, but he'd never connected that the shockwave erupted from himself. All he had done was mimic what the green man had done. He remembered seeing a blue glow and a lot of gears. Maybe... Whether intentionally or not, you used Chroma. I don't think there's any question there. But I think it's a bit more crucial at this moment that we find a better name for you than just Peck. I don't suppose you found any better ideas in one of the books you skimmed through, did you, little guy? Name? Ah! Name? Uh, name is... Sure enough, he remembered reading a lot of baby names and their meanings. Although that didn't mean he wanted to use them. He felt they didn't fit him well in the slightest. He pondered what name could work. Dozens of titles danced within his mind before a single memory came back into his brain. He could feel the smooth yet rusted texture of that special mechanical chunk he had found. Remembering how strong he felt when he copied the green man's actions. The shockwave? The supposed clockwork encasing the pair? Gog! Declared the goblinoid, confident as could be. Olga tilted her head in confusion. Cog? Like a gear? I don't know, it feels like you probably deserve a real- Cog! <sighs> cog it is. So, uh, Cog. Pondered Orville as he tended to Grimm's wounds. I 
want to drift back to the chroma use. He turned his gaze to Olga. You said that it was a massive series of gears? Yeah, and they were all in perpetual motion, just accelerating faster and faster. She closed the notebook she had begun absentmindedly scribbling in, nibbling on the end of her pen. The whirring, it was overwhelming, even at such a distance. What I want to know is what damn variety of chroma is that? I mean, it, it can't be Earth because it was, it was metal, and definitely not dark or light seeing as how concrete it was. Couldn't have been fire or water either, for that matter. And wind is highly unlikely due to it being, uh, again, metal. Orville yet again turned to Cog, laughing heartily. You, my friend, are an enigma. I suppose we should introduce ourselves. I'm Orville. I work with those shiny rocks you guys love so much. And I'm Olga. I work here. Or at least I will once construction of this damn shopping district is finally done. Regardless, I'm known for being quite the avid reader, so you can feel free to read stuff from here anytime, providing that you don't break anything again. <laughs> she attempted her best warm smile towards Cog, but due to the strained look of it, he felt more off-put than comforted. A rustling drew Orville's attention from the peck to focus on the bulking figure of Braun, now sitting propped up on his elbows. What in the hell's happened? I feel like I was hit by a train. He paused, glancing at Cog, his face contorted with a combination of fear and confusion. Olga! Orville! What in the hell is it doing here? Settle down, Braun. It doesn't want to be aggressive. From what I heard, you forced it into a fighting scenario. Is that right? At this, Braun just looked away indignantly, cursing under his breath, while Orville smirked. As I thought. Listen. Uh, Cog. His name is now Cog, Bron. Uh, but Cog, you're a miracle of life. A true blessing upon the world. You could help us in so many ways. Uh, but only if we share you with the public. Uh, however... Orville's eyes strayed to Grim, his burned body barely beginning to stir as his eyes continued to drift out the window behind his fallen friend. You are an unknown. People fear the unknown. And it's unfortunately in the nature of all sentient species on this world to destroy what brings them fear. His face met Cog's with a sad smile. For all the good you could bring, you could also bring bad. If the wrong people got a hold of you, they could learn better ways to get what they want while hurting even more people. This is why I don't think you should be shared around. At this... Olga was silent, head hung low. Braun, however... Come on, Orville. If there's evil, there will always be stuff to fend it off. Besides, you need good and bad to make the world go round. If the worst thing that comes of this is consequences, I'm sure we can deal with them. You know, Braun, I can't really agree with you. People are harsh, greedy, violent. If some malicious researcher got a hold of this anomaly... Oi... I couldn't imagine a thing strong enough to take them down. There's too much risk of us creating a problem that cannot be fixed. Orville, I know you and Grimm share the same views here, and I know you're more afraid of it than you are intrigued by it. I know you both can't see past the little picture, and for once, the giant oaf is right. We need to share this pack with the world. Hells, I'll bet even- Even what? Even the scum who take advantage of the discovery would be in too much awe to take full advantage of it. Grow the hell up. Olga, for God's sakes, do you even hear yourself? You sure as hell haven't been hearing me. Oh, you know what? No, you're right. You're right. I never even considered the fact that sharing how everything could be cognizant would lead to complete and utter war. <laughs> Obviously, I'm more adult than anyone else here. Yes, clearly shown by the current state of Grimm. How about we just find someone? Just shut the hells up, you oaf. He, he tried to fight me, and now he is... A sudden thunderous sound echoed through the building. The freshly replaced door shook in its frame from the force of the knocking, and a regal, commanding voice accompanied it. Housekeeping. It sang, a rumbling laugh following close behind. 
Braun appeared confused, but both Olga and Orville blanched. Is that... is that Founder Foster? Orville nodded, and the pair swallowed hard, the jeweler quickly hiding grim behind another mirror. Highly confused, Cog simply scratched his head while looking at the door. Who was Founder Foster? Before he could react, Olga glared at the peck with burning eyes and gritted teeth. One word told Cog all that he needed to know. Hide. Despite not understanding the situation fully, he blinked and situated himself behind a bookshelf, moving his contents just enough to look through. He kept shuffling around until he found a spot where the door was fully visible while he was fully hidden. The sounds persisted. <laughs> Come now, I'd hate for this door to be replaced again. A raucous laughter accompanied this comment as the knocking persisted. Olga stumbled over herself in a frenzied attempt to reach the door. Brushing herself off, she took a deep breath and briskly opened it. The moment she did, Olga's response finally made sense to Cog. A massive wave of pressure surged through the building, a shadowy figure reaching the top of the doorframe. The sheer energy, very similar to the blob Cog had fended off, nearly knocked him off his feet. Instincts ignited within him, consuming any logic or reason he'd held onto beforehand, causing him to lock up in place. The monumental force of presence this individual held filled the room, intertwined with the very air and gripped onto Cog's mind. There was a sort of predatory aspect to it. He stood even above Brawn, and from the look of it, his shoulders would brush past the sides of the doorframe on his way in. As he began to introduce himself, Cog sank into his own thoughts, hearing nothing but a dull hum of unintelligible conversation. Despite this, he could still tell this newcomer's voice carried itself far over everyone else's. His eyes were a deep crimson color, within which laid a level of understanding the Peck could only dream of. His well-cleaned suit fit his form perfectly, subtly showing off his bulking figure further. Everyone within the room listened silently and respectfully as he spoke, no questions asked, Cog noting the extensive use of gestures accompanying his speech. Finally coming back to his senses, Cog felt the conversation slowly but surely begin to weave its way into his ears. Which is why I'm designating a trustworthy CEO to defend this location, and all others around here. We wouldn't want to ignore this break-in and risk hindering our growth, now would we? Orville, Olga, and Braun all nodded in unison and in eerie silence. Splendid! In that case, I'd like you to meet one of my closest employees. Noel? Noel, get in here! His voice rattled the very air around the group, the sheer weight of his vocalizations causing a slight ringing in Cog's ears. Yet another newcomer jogged around the corner, but she stood significantly shorter than Founder Foster. Her extensive red hair reached her ankles, face peppered heavily in freckles, and eyes sparkling a vibrant blue. Her appearance was the opposite of her boss's, her arms were thin, sporting a relatively scrawny frame, while her face held gentle features. She bounced on her heels, a kind smile dimly shining past the ominous presence beside her. Her suit a beautiful sky blue, detailed with aquamarine highlights. Noelle's demeanor managed to release his instincts from Foster's presence. Kindly hold off introductions until after I excuse myself. After all, I'm a busy man. Though, before I make my leap, I have but one simple question for you lot. I don't suppose you caught who or what broke in, did you? 
The air weighed on Cog's lungs, muscles curling in on themselves. His heart dropped to his gut, throat clenching. His eyes darted between the individuals before settling on Olga, who cleared her throat. After a few seconds of painful silence, leaving the group with bated breath, she spoke. Uh, no, no, sir. I'm, I'm afraid they, they got away. I, I must ask about your, your phrasing, though. Oh, it's truly nothing of concern, Ogre. I simply received a few reports of a stout humanoid being being chased by you two. Descriptions led me to believe to be one of a few creatures, many of which I have high bounties if brought to me, dead or alive. I know you're always eager to go the extra mile for me, Olga. If you find the ghastly entity that broke in here and bring it to me, I'll give you the posted reward tenfold. At this revelation, Olga's face darkened. She looked down at her hands, slightly shaking. Are you certain you don't know, my dear? Pride Foster. After a short pause... Olga merely shook her head no, ushering a disappointed sigh from him. Well then, what do you think it was? I... I would guess it was some goblinoid or maybe some of those elusive shape-shifting monstrosities, yeah. Maybe some ape or something from around here. I mean, honestly, sir, I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, if you do discover the culprit, you know what to do. Crimson eyes lazily scanning the room. Foster's gaze set upon Cog's hiding spot, and he smirked. Even without achieving eye contact, he managed to send a jolt straight down the peck's spine. He then straightened his suit and tie before striding out of the building, gently closing the door behind him. After a few moments, Braun spoke. Olga. Shut up, Ron. I I know. Just shut up. This was our chance to show it. <laughs> it. Olga began before glancing at Noel, whose face betrayed slight suspicion. No, Ron. Just, just drop it. What are you keeping from Foster, Olga? Noel tilted her head in curiosity. A wave of panic overtook the peck, causing him to twitch. All of the heads in the room shot to attention when a book fell off of a shelf. What is that? Noelle muttered, squinting in Cog's general direction as she hunched down. Olga held out a hand to try and stop her before recoiling. Looking to the peck apologetically, he let out a grunt as he tried to shift wounds left over from the scuffle with Braun, leaving him severely hindered. Without a second's hesitation, Noelle's arm whipped out from her side as the floor trembled beneath the peck. His feet were suddenly encased in a hyperdense sort of vapor, far different from any morning fog or heavy swampland air he'd experienced before, reminding him more of his time within that technicolor blob than anything else, which further hindered his movement to a crawl. The others instantly jumped to their feet as Noelle leapt to face down her target. Orville slumped into a chair, hands covering his face, an exasperated groan escaping his lips. Oh my gods, oh my gods, oh my gods, oh my gods, what in the hells do I do now? Olga gently grabbed onto Noelle's shoulders, gesturing to Cog, who was actively using his hands to try and wave away the steam encasing his legs and feet. His efforts did nothing but intrigue Noelle, who raised an eyebrow at the odd behavior. Noelle, meet Cog. He's a, uh, (laughs) a special case. Looking up, the peck merely held up a shy hand. Uh, Hi. He meekly pointed to himself, mind scrabbling over itself to find appropriate terminology. I'm Cog. Nice to meet you. Hard to speak. Good. 
jaw left slack and eyes wide, Noelle slowly turned to face Olga. She pointed to the anomaly before her, then to Olga and the rest of the group. Her mouth moved, but no sound came out. She finally slumped onto her knees, looking in awe at Cog. Though it did not take her very long to find her words. Who did this? Is it a trick? An illusion? Some kind of test from Foster, perhaps? This isn't possible. It's dangerous, but it's behaving oddly. And it spoke. It spoke. Which means I must be going mad. I need research materials, tools. I want to know everything. Please. Cog simply looked up with a defeated look. Help! Uh, first. As Foster was about to enter his vehicle, he paused and turned back to look at the bookstore, grinning. So, Ether, hmm. <laughs> Very well. Let the games begin.